mean, a big theme of this year's conference has been uh, leading in an era of uncertainty. And the uncertainty that we're seeing uh, really from clients everywhere and delegates everywhere is around the big global issues, whether it's a slowdown in China, risk of conflict in the Middle East, will the Eurozone fix its problems, what will happen after the elections in the United States. The two biggest economies out there, the US and China, are making quite a bit of progress and moving to new new form of life, let's call it. And that's certainly what I believe, and the others had a bit more sympathy with that view than I expected them to say. Europe really was going, in, at the end of 2011, into a very big crisis. And it was obvious, because suddenly these increased spreads had got to Italy and Spain, and nobody knew what was going to happen. There was cause to be optimistic about the United States, in the short term because of housing, Productivity in the medium term was certainly problematic, but I, I personally feel that developments like um, uh, the use of shale gas, cheap energy, and technological developments um, will really help the US, and you should never ever underestimate the productivity and inv innovation levels in, in the United States. The crucible for the world's anxieties runs through the Middle East uh, at the moment. You've got clear legitimacy crisis of a number of regimes who can't maintain the confidence of their own people. This has been, for the first time in a very long time, Arabs, young Arabs, confused Arabs, uh, divided Arabs, taking some kind of responsibility for the future of their own countries, whether it's Tunisia, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Libya, uh, whether it is as they're trying in Syria. Islamic parties have to own the problem. They have to own the bread prices. They have to own the difficulties. They have to own the tourist trade. You've got geopolitics being played out uh, with the Russian veto in respect of Syria and an American sense of awkwardness about what's it, what is its post Afghanistan, post Iraq role in the Middle East. It's great to have that opportunity to step back, to, to get up in a helicopter and look down on um, the issues we're dealing with every day, especially for someone who works somewhere like Beirut, where you can get very distracted by the, the, uh, the micro issues that you're, you're dealing with. And of course, being in Lebanon, you're buffeted by these geostrategic forces the whole time, and so you need to understand them. Given that the perpetual flow is coming from fossil energy, the only resolution of that issue is, is either to leave it in the ground, and there's no apparent sign that that's going to happen, or to implement carbon capture and storage. Politicians will make popular and short decisions in this area, and they'll shy away from making the long-term decisions. Then we will have no price on carbon because that will only be introduced by politics. Many of the countries, because of the economical and financial situation they are in today, they are holding back on the investments, whether it is R&D, whether it is a new technologies and, and deployment of these technologies into the market. In other words, I think I tick every box required to be a li lifelong member of London's very powerful club of Eurosceptics. But Euroscepticism is not my club. On the contrary, I believe in the logic and justice of the, uh, of the modern European project, and my country, Poland, will do its utmost to help it succeed. It's been a sobering year, uh, but I think people have understood a lot of the structural drivers uh, of the global challenges better now and are trying to navigate them uh, in a better way. 